Hello friends, today we are going to see how to use EBS volume on EC2 instance. So for that purpose, I have already provisioned one EC2 instance and you can see it on the screen. And uh, I just want to bring your attention to the availability zone, which is US East 1A. Why I'm specifying uh, AZ is like, as uh, you know, like EBS, will be locked to specific availability zone. So we cannot have instance in one availability zone and uh, EBS on different. Both has to be in same. So when we create a volume, we'll make sure that it is in US East 1A. So let's uh, go to the elastic block storage volumes. Yeah, you can see one is already there, which is the root volume for the instance, which is running. We'll create a new one. Keep it as is. Make it 8 GB. We do not need 100. Then US Sist 1A, it's already taken that. So we'll keep it as is. Yeah, so first we can keep it as is. Let's, let's put tag to it. EBS demo volume. I'll just give some name to this and create volume. Yeah, so volume is created. Yeah, so this is our EBS volume, and you can see the status, which is state is available. So we can use this volume to mount it on EC2 instance. So let's go to EC2 instance and you can see, I just keep it uh, for our reference. You can see there is a very good documentation from AWS on this, how to mount it. So we are going to do similar to what is there in document. So let's get started. Okay, so this is I'm using to connect to EC2. So you can see this, I'm using Termius uh, application to connect to EC2, but you can even do it through PuTTY if you find that better. Yeah, so first uh, what we should do is we should first make our uh, instance ready. So using this, right? Yeah, so I have already run this earlier, but let's see like uh, if you haven't, then you should do this as a first step. Yeah, so no packages marked for update because I have done it earlier, as I said. So let's uh, see whether we have that volume created. And it should be. Oh, sorry, I just forgot to do one thing, like attaching this volume to our EC2. That is a mandatory step. So yeah, let's do it. So instances, only one instance is running. And this is important. You can just see the note what AWS says here is newer Linux kernel may rename your devices to some different name. So if we see device name here, it is a slash dev slash SDF, but it will be renamed to something else. And we can ourselves see it when we go to EC2. But for now, let's attach it to the instance. Right. So yeah, now you can see the state is in use. So it is attached to the instance. It's good. Like we can see it ourselves that it is, uh, it was not there earlier. Right. So now let's see if we get that mount here. Yeah. You can see it is XVDF and this is a different name. What we see it on console, but that is what is clarified by AWS in the note. So now First, we can just see whether it is used by some other uh, file system. It should not be, but let's see. Okay, so if you, uh, you see this output, then you can be sure that it's not used by any other file system. So we don't have any file system on this mount. 
we just this is a uh, precautionary steps so now we can create a file system on this particular mount yes so you have created a file system let's see if we see any different output here right you can see that file system is created on this if you see above without before creating file system you can see that it does not specify any file system but here we do see that so that is what i mentioned like we just check to make sure that no file system is there so now let's create a mount point for this so here you can um, just create a directory which you can use it for mounting it so i'll just we can use any name i just put data here right so let's do its test right just to change that one right so you can see that we have created directory slash test so that we will use to mount our uh, file system what we just created mount then this file system and here we created slash test right yes so this is created so if you see tf minus h so i would think like it is there so if you see the last file system which is test this is the mount point which we just created so even you can make this uh, persistent for now what will happen is if our system reboots or uh, this instance reboots then we do not will not see this uh, mount point and we need to redo this uh, uh, mounting of the file system but if you make it persistent then it we do not need to do it so okay so how you can do it is let's do that as well i'll just show you like uh, it's simple like you need to make a entry in uh, etc fs tab so i'll just show you that and there is a uh, syntax for using it so you how to find out details what you need for adding entry to fs tab so this is the id you will need and the entry let me show you that i already added that etc fs tab so you can use any editor of your choice i usually use vi so you can just put this entry there So the first entry I put it there, which will make it persistent. So let's uh, now see whether we can access this particular mount. CD slash test, and uh, let's see whether we can create some file here. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, you can see that this file is created. So that's how we can create a mount from AWS console and then attach that mount to instance. Make sure that mount and instance are in same availability zone. Then connect to this instance using either Putty or whatever way. Like here, I'm using a, a iPad application to connect, but you can use Putty as well. Connect to the instance. and follow the steps to first create a file system on this uh, volume and then mount that volume on any mount location what we want here we created slash test and mounted it there but it can be anything so then uh, like uh, as i mentioned there is a uh, well documented steps provided by uh, aws 
you can just refer that and learn more on this yeah thanks for watching i hope like you got some new information as part of the tutorial